today I'm going to show you how to make an auto kicker in Rec Room. And we're going to do this in three steps. Step number one is going to be a gun. You can point at somebody and it will kick them to the rec center. Step number two is going to add a whitelist to that. And step three is going to be a random kicker that kicks one person from the room every minute or so. So at the time of recording this, there are two main chips we're using, the destination room constant and the go to room. They are both beta chips, so we need to enable beta. All right, so we're gonna start off with a trigger handle. And then next, we're gonna use a beacon to visualize what you're actually pointing at. All right, so you can see it looks like it's pretty, like it's pretty straight on there. So we need a clamp. Connect the actual trigger handle to the black part. And then this part up here, we're gonna connect to the beam. We'll have to check the accuracy. I, it looks like it might be a little bit crooked. All right, so now that that's set up, we are gonna use a Raycast. And if you don't know, what a Raycast does is it essentially sends out an invisible like line and it will detect if that invisible line hits something. So first we need to determine where we want our invisible ray to start at and then we need to figure out what direction we want the invisible ray to point. We're going to have the start position be the exact same position that the trigger handle is at. So we just need to get position of the trigger handle. Then for the direction, we just want to use the forward vector of the trigger handle. So for that, there's a chip called get forward vector. So now we have a vector that's starting right here and it's pointing this direction, but we haven't told it how far in that direction we want it to go. From earlier, we set this to 10, so I'm gonna use 10 as well. So the Raycast is set up to detect objects and people, but we only want it to detect players. So we're going to configure the Raycast chip to only detect players. What do we actually want it to do? Well, when we pull the trigger, we want it to send somebody to a room. So we're gonna use those chips that we talked about earlier. So when the trigger is pressed on the trigger handle, the primary action press, we want it to go to room. And then we're gonna set the player to be the player detected over there. Unless of course no player is detected and then it will do nothing. So for that, we also need an if chip. So when primary action is pressed, we want it to check and see if the Raycast has hit a player. If it is true, then we want it to go to room and we want to send the player that was detected, which is that right there, and send it to this destination. For this, you need to configure it and pick your destination room. Right. So right now it says invalid data. What you have to do is click here and type out whatever room that you want them to go to. I've tried all sorts of different ways to send people to their dorm because I don't know, you just can't do it. Or maybe there's some secret code I don't know about. If you know how to send people to their dorm room with this thing, please tell me. So usually what I'll do is make some sort of sub room that's like that nobody can get to. I usually call it the void. It's just nothing's in there. But what I've done recently is you can switch it and just send them to the rec center. Or if you want, you can send them to orientation. Are you consenting to being kicked back to the rec center? Yeah. Thank you for your service. Oh, good man. Oh, it, it, oh, man. So this brought up a problem I didn't think about. If you kick them, it's going to ask them to invite the party that they're in. So after doing some tweaking, I found out that you need to send them to a subroom of the room you are currently in. And then the auto follow option will become available on the bottom. So now we can add a whitelist, which is a list of people that it will not kick from the room. So first off, we need an and chip, list create. So we're gonna get a two string. We're gonna use a list contains. So we're gonna take the player that's being pointed at and turn it into a string. And then we're going to ask, does this list that we're making, which is the target here, contain this string, which is equal to a player, Let's go ahead and add my name over here to the whitelist. And of course you can add more. It starts with two, but if you configure it and you hit add input, it'll just add a third one, a fourth one. It'll just keep adding them on. This next part might be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to hook it up and then I'll explain to you afterwards. So next we're going to need a not chip. We're going to disconnect our bool from the Raycast and hook it up to the and. We're going to hook up our list contains to the not. And then we're going to hook up the not to the other and input. Then we will hook that result to the if. 
So scenario one is that you click it and there's nobody that it's detecting. So this would be false, which would then make this false, which would then make this false, which would then mean that nobody, nobody gets kicked. The second scenario is that you push the trigger and it hits somebody, but that person is in the whitelist. So you click it. This would be true because it is hitting somebody, which would then make that true. But then because it's in the list, that's going to make this true. And since that is true and we don't want it to send when somebody is in the list, we're going to use the not to flip it so that it's false, which will then make this one false. So we have a true and a false, which then means this will be false, which then means this will be false, which means that it won't kick nobody. And then the third scenario is when you hit somebody and they're not on the whitelist, you click the trigger. Did it hit somebody? Yes, this is true. Are they in the list? No, they're not in the list. But because we have it switched to, to a not, it's going to flip to true, which means both of these are true, which means this is true, which then means that we, we send them off and we kick them. So now I shall use me as an example. So I can check right now. It says false. It's not hitting anybody. Right now it is hitting someone. So if I click it, will it send me? It won't. And it doesn't send me because I'm on the whitelist. So that's it for the kicker gun. Now we need the auto kicker that kicks people like once a minute. So for this, we honestly don't need half of the stuff we've already used. We don't need the trigger handle. We don't need the beam. We don't need the ray cast or the vectors. For this, we need a timer. There's a couple of different ways you can do a timer. I'm gonna use an invention I have, which is the one hertz tick. This is free. And it works only on the room authority player circuits so that it's continuous even if room authority leaves. Then we're gonna get an integer variable you can do add or subtract i feel like subtraction is going to be more of like a like a oh once it hits zero somebody gets got so we're going to do subtraction so we're going to make this subtract one from the variable every second but i do want to add in a on off switch later so let's let's not do that right now we're going to change this value to one then we're going to use another if chip and an equals chip so we want to check if this number equals zero then we want it to kick somebody but we also want it to check the whitelist before it kicks anybody but we actually have to make it pick the player that it wants to kick so let's detach that and we're gonna get a random from list and that list is gonna be a list of all players in the room get all players this value is gonna be the one that needs to be checked to see if it's on the whitelist. So we put it there and it's the player that would end up being kicked if it does go through and they're not on the whitelist. I don't wanna hook this up because it'll start counting, but assuming that it does count, right? Then after it adds or subtracts, we wanna check and see if it's zero. If it is zero, then we want it to pick a random player from all the players. Then we want it to check if it's in the whitelist down here. So we're gonna do that. And if it's not in the whitelist or all of this stuff that we did earlier, then we want it to kick that play. Now, if they do end up being on the whitelist and we need it to go select somebody else, what we're going to do is loop back around from this else. So we've reached zero. We've picked a random player. That player ended up being in the list. So it's going to come out of the else and we want it to pick a new player. Now, once it does actually kick somebody, we also want this to be reset to whatever our maximum time is going to be. So for that, we are going to clone this integer variable, bring it over here somewhere. And after it ends up kicking whoever it kicks, we're going to go down here and we're going to set it to whatever our maximum time was going to be. We were going to do one minute. We're just going to set this to 60. All right. So now I want to add a on off switch, like a bool on off switch over here. So what that's going to take is another if chip and we're going to go ahead and hook this up. So we'll hook that up there. And then if it's true, we want it to start counting down. So then for our on off switch, we'll just use a button, a bool variable. And we're also going to use another not. We're going to put pressed to our bool and then we're going to make our X. Let's go there. So what this will do is it'll flip the bool from true to false, true to false, true to false. Every time you click it, we also want that to be set to 60 once this does become true so we're going to go ahead and pull this back over here so that it does set to 60 as well and then we want to hook up this bool here 
So once you hit the button, it'll flip this to true. It'll define that as being 60. Then it'll start counting down. Once it hits zero, then it's gonna pick a random player. It will check to see if that random player is in the whitelist. If it is not in the whitelist, then it will kick them and it will start the count over again. I realized that this and chip is not actually necessary anymore. I should have deleted it earlier. And you're gonna hook up the not chip to that if. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see, is it gonna kick? Hey, look at that. All right. Well, if that video helped you, I'll consider supporting me here on Rec Room. Just find my profile and hit that little heart button or use RCL1. Check out this video if you need some more circuits to do. My name's the RCL Man, and RCL Man out.